Let's call this uh, meeting of the Huron City Council to order, please. This is for November 24th, 2020. Uh, please all stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands. one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Crawford? Here. Klaus? Here. Tab? You're muted. Tab? He's muted. Monty, Tab? Monty, hit your little microphone. You're muted, Monty. We'll come back to him. Artino? Here. Dyke? Here. You're muted, Joe. I'm here. I got you, Monty. Dyke? Joe Dyke is here. Hardy? Peggy? Here. All right. Mr. Thank Mayor? You. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we excuse Mr. Hardy from the meeting with the intent that he'll join us if he's able. Yes. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. Tap. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Aggie. Yes. All right. Thank you. I need a motion to, uh, to approve the uh, minutes for council work session of October 27th and uh, for mm -hmm. the regular council meeting on October 27th, 2020, please. I get a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I make, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of council work session October 27th and regular meeting of October 22nd. 27th, I'm sorry, as written. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, do you have any? Uh, emails or uh, any correspondence to read? I do not. Okay. Then the, the next on the agenda is, well, it's the, the tabled ordinance, uh, ordinance uh, 2020-17. We're not prepared to bring that off the table yet, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Do we need a motion to, to do anything with that at all? No. No, okay. Uh, under new business and next is ordinance number 2020-31. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Carlos. I make a motion that we uh, waive the three reading rule and put ordinance 20-31 on its first reading. Uh, discussion on that motion. Please call the roll. Claude? Yes. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Yes. Dyke? Yes. Hardy. Oh, sorry. Hagee. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is ordinance number two zero two zero dash three one. An ordinance establishing fund number 202, property maintenance fund, and declaring an emergency. Plus. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to place ordinance 2020-31 on emergency. Any discussion on that motion? 
Please call the roll. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Hagee? Yes. Crawford? Yes. All right. Matt? Mr. Lasko? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, uh, and I'll, uh, when I'm done, I'll defer to Ray's good if he has anything else to add. Um, but what's before council is the creation uh, of a new uh, property maintenance fund uh, as it relates to um, the property maintenance ordinance uh, that was revamped several weeks ago uh, by council. Uh, but this is a fund basically as it relates to the city stepping in uh, to abate nuisances uh, on private property, uh, namely uh, the replacement and repair uh, of sidewalks. Um, so this would be a fund that would allow us to track uh, assessment payments received by the city and ultimately expenses out uh, as it relates to making those repairs or nuisance abatements. Uh, so with that, uh, I defer to Mr. Swaysgood if he has anything else additional he'd like to add. Uh, no, thank you, Matt. I don't have much more to add other than uh, letting council know that there will be a transfer from the general fund seed money once we get an idea when we get our first project that how much that costs. So uh, that'll probably take place either later this year or next year, depending on when the project will take place. Uh, but as Matt said, this is just to properly account for the activity of mainly the sidewalk inspection and repair program and any other program that's enforceable under the city code, such as uh, grass cutting, uh, another assessment that the city performs. So this fund will properly account for that for us to uh, mainly for administration to, um, manage these programs and keep a close eye on them. Okay. Any discussion? Please call the roll and final adoption. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Crawford? Yes. All right, next on the agenda is ordinance number 2020-32. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> regarding Peggy. ordinance uh, yeah, uh, regarding ordinance 2020-32, I'd like to make a motion that the three reading rule be waived and it be placed on its first reading. All right. Any uh, discussion on that motion? Call the roll. Peggy? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 2020-32, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2019-27, adopted December 10, 2019, to provide for additional appropriations from the general fund and other funding sources and an increase in estimated resources and further approving cash transfers between funds and declaring an emergency. Mr. Hagen. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion that we uh, designate ordinance 2020-32 as an emergency. Discussion on the emergency measure. Please call the roll. Hagen. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. Cap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lasker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I'll also at the conclusion of my comments defer to uh, Mr. Swaysgood uh, on this as well. Uh, but under this appropriations measure, um, the city's looking to um, move funds <clears throat> from certain activities to other activities between accounts and between activities uh, that should generally have zero effect um on the city's uh budgetary status um and these are funds related to building permit revenue uh and payments to the township uh also transfers as it relates to uh cares dollars 
uh, and other transfers into other funds. Uh, so I defer to Mr. Sway's good to add a little bit additional layer of detail uh, to that on behalf of council. Uh, yes, thank you, Matt. The, uh, as Matt said, the uh, supplemental appropriations and estimated resources in front of you are strictly due to the increased building permits that we received over the last few months. And uh, therefore, with the contract with the township, those permit fees that come in do uh, get remitted out to the township every month. So just asking for additional appropriations and estimated resources to properly budget and pay for those uh, expenses. In addition, the coronavirus relief fund, uh, no additional revenue there or expenses. It's just really moving the budget around through from other expenses to personnel services and as you all probably know it's mainly due to the last few months where uh, the personnel services side the payroll side of expenses out of the coronavirus relief fund has been uh, a lot more than we anticipated over the last few months so we did have room to move budget from other expenses to personnel uh, and the net impact on those measures for budget and estimated resources is zero to the overall city budget. Uh, in addition to all of that, uh, there are a lot of cash transfers on this uh, ordinance, and that's mainly due to some of the transfers for to our budget stabilization fund for payroll that were not made during the year uh, and some other capital transfers that were not made due to the pandemic. Um, after review of and closing out October, uh, that I, I, I'm confident that our operational funds have sufficient cash reserves at this point in the year, and that we can confidently make these budgeted cash transfers without impacting essential city services for the rest of the year. Uh, so that's uh, these transfers that you see on here. And in addition to that, there's also pension transfers and uh, other debt service transfers, other necessary transfers that we've been making all year. So uh, no additional budget on these transfers if this was all planned for this year, which is a good sign that we can make them at this point. All right. Any questions or discussion? Please call the roll for final adoption. Hagee? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. All right, next is resolution 2020-77. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that resolution 2020-77 be placed, the uh, three reading rule be waived and it be placed on its first reading. All right, discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Peggy? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. All right, Mr. Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 2020-77, a resolution authorizing the city manager to make the annual premium payment to the public entities pool of Ohio for the policy period December 1, 2020 through November 30, 2021 in an amount not to exceed $73,574. Mr. Lasko. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Uh, this is a uh, request uh, for authorization to pay uh, the entirety uh, of our insurance premium uh, to public entities pool of Ohio. Uh, for the policy year, December 1st, 2020, uh, through the end of November 2021. Uh, as stated in the background, uh, the policy amount is for $73,574. Uh, this is about a seven to seven and a half percent increase uh, than the policy premium uh, for the prior 12 months. Uh, that's due in part to uh, just standard rate increases. Uh, secondarily, uh, the city has had of new vehicle additions uh, and property additions, which uh, justify part of that policy increase. Um, we do uh, expect in 2021 uh, to look for opportunities to shop that rate. Uh, we did not, <clears throat> excuse me, we did not feel it was advantageous this year as there are some active claims uh, that are still outstanding that we expect to drop off. 
uh, but we do expect to shop that rate, uh, the 2022 rate uh, in 2021. Uh, and Mr. Sway's good. I don't know if you'd like to add anything uh, to that narrative. Uh, no, thanks, Matt. I, I think you uh, covered everything. Uh, just wanted to uh, let the council know too, is that on uh, shopping the rate this year, it was advised from our insurance provider that we should stay with PEP until next year, just because of the active claims that we have right now. Uh, so like Mr. Lasko said, it's we look forward to hopefully next year be able to start uh, for our insurance. But that is all. Thanks. Okay. Any questions or discussion? Yes, Corey or Matt, whoever's dealing with us. I mean, did they did they mention the claim activity at all in the renewal conversation? Are we in any kind of jeopardy? Did we get significantly dinged for the claims or not really part of the conversation? Uh, I can handle uh, Matt if you, if yeah. you want. There wasn't any specific mention to the reason for the rate increase being because of claims, if that's what you're asking. But yeah, uh, I think that there was no mention of specific claims either. Just the okay. current active uh, legal claims that we have is restricting yeah. us from being able to. And, and Pep did. PEP did take rate across the board, but it wasn't 7%. So I didn't know if they gave you any justification for that percentage or not. Uh, no, just for the additional auto additions and property just for the, the past year. Okay. Uh, Corey, we added the fire engine, which was fire a engine. ticket item. Yeah, that's a big one. Okay. Yeah. And, and I know at the end of last year, adding the substation, I think we added the substation property and the, the new asset out of the substations last year. So I think right. that, and that would have been prorated. So this is the first time you're seeing the annual on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. No problem. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, please call the roll on final adoption. Hagney? Yes. Crawford? Yes. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Okay, next is ordinance number 2020-33. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 2020-33 be placed on its first reading and the re-reading rule be waived. Okay, discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Mike. Yes. Hagee. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claude. Yes. Okay, Mr. Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance number 2020-33. An ordinance providing consent for rehabilitation of the bridge on US 6 at SLM 18.1 over the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is a request uh, for consent to undertake certain construction activities uh, on behalf of the Ohio Department of Transportation. Uh, they are looking to undertake uh, rehabilitative work um, on the US 6 bridge uh, over the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Uh, that work would include uh, reconstruction of the bridge decking, uh, also new walkways and railings on both sides. Uh, this project is slated to be completed in 2025. 100% uh, of the cost of the work uh, would be funded by uh, ODOT. Uh, and if there is uh, to be determined uh, utility relocation, uh, that would uh, also be fully reimbursed uh, by the Ohio Department of Transportation. So uh, they're merely looking for consent to undertake this project in 2025 at no cost to the city. All right. Any questions or discussion? Please call the roll for final adoption. Uh, we need this to be passed as an emergency measure. Oh, okay. Mr. Tapp. Mr. Tapp. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to be uh, a motion designated this as emergency matter, please. Okay, discussion on that motion. Please call the roll on the motion to uh, uh, place as emergency. 
Tap. Yes. Tartino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. Okay, now uh, we'll vote on the uh, motion for the final adoption, please. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. All right, next is resolution number 2020-78. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that resolution number 2020-78 be placed on its first reading and the three reading rule be waived. Okay. Discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. All right, Mr. Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A resolution of, excuse me, resolution number 2020-78 a resolution authorizing the city manager to make an annual premium payment to the Bureau of Workers Compensation for the policy period January 1, 2021 through January 1, 2022 in an amount not to exceed $45,303. Does this need to be passed as an emergency? No, this is a resolution. We're good. Oh, oh that's right. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Lasko. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a request for authorization uh, to pay the entirety of Bureau of Workers' Compensation premium for 2021 in the amount of $45,303. Uh, this is a approximate 7% reduction uh, from uh, the current policy year. Um, and we are looking to make payment uh, as quick as possible. Uh, if that payment is made uh, before January 1st of 2021, uh, the city would be uh, or would be eligible for a 2% uh, rebate of that premium. Um, Mr. Sway is good. I don't know if there's anything else you would like to add uh, to those notes. Uh, the only other thing, uh, just noting too, that 7% uh, reduction from last year on the premium. And with our call, uh, last week with our comp management group that uh, helps manage this uh, our program with BWC, uh, they did note that especially over the past few years, uh, claims have been pretty low. Uh, actually, uh, in 2020, we're at zero claims right now. Uh, so we're expecting that hopefully with that uh, historical performance that this premium should not go up. Um, especially with how it, I think everyone kind of sees from the news that the uh, BWC reserve is pretty healthy and they're giving out the dividends back to the employers. So the expectation is that we we uh, should not see much more of a, a cross my uh, or knock on wood here, but should not see a, a much more of an increase on the BWC premiums going forward, especially with our uh, history of our claims the last few years. So uh, that's a good sign coming forward. All right, any discussion or questions? Please call the roll for final adoption. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Hyde Peggy. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claude. Yes. All right, next is uh, city manager discussion. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Um, good evening to everyone again. Um, did want to touch base uh, on a few things uh, in terms of updates uh, for the council uh, and the community as well. Um, an update on uh, US Route 6. Um, as everyone has seen, uh, that project is wrapping up, at least the first phase is wrapping up. Um, the crosswalks are substantially complete. The catch basins are installed. Uh, the paving is substantially complete. Uh, the center islands uh, have been constructed. Uh, the crews have been busy uh, the last few days doing some striping. Um, we did have uh, a snafu or two, I'll call it, 
at the intersection uh, of River Road and Route 6 and also Tiffin uh, and Route 6 uh, where those turn lanes were not striped. Uh, crews were already out there today uh, pulling that temporary paint off uh, to make the adjustments to make sure those turn lanes were installed and will be installed. Uh, so that should be done uh, momentarily. Um, so appreciate everyone's patience with that and the crews jumped on uh, that very quickly uh, to eradicate that issue. Uh, update on uh, leaf pickup, which continues uh, throughout the city. Uh, crews are, as mentioned, working their way eastward to westward. Um, they are uh, nearly uh, complete with their third trip uh, through the city. Uh, there was a slight delay uh, as we uh, had a piece of equipment break down, uh, but crews are nearly uh, through that third round uh, and will at least uh, make a fourth trip uh, through the city as well as they're done with uh, uh, the third trip. Uh, also an update on the uh, Cleveland Road sidewalks, which I know was in front of uh, council uh, a few meetings ago uh, for the city to step in and make those repairs uh, to those cracked and damaged sidewalks. Uh, as of today, uh, those repairs have been made um, and the crews have been there uh, seeding um, the landscaped areas uh, and the tree lawn areas as well. So we're excited to see that project done uh, very quickly. Um, an update on uh, transient rental uh, legislation. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of work put in uh, and a lot of work sessions that have been done uh, between the community staff and council. Uh, our legal team continues to make uh, updates and alterations to the transient rental legislation that was already existing. Uh, they're also hard at work um, at working on draft overlay legislation um, so that we can hopefully have work sessions of council uh, at the upcoming meetings. Uh, they do uh, and have provided me an initial draft, I believe yesterday that I'm uh, quickly reviewing, uh, but my hope would be to have a work session uh, if this council would like uh, at the next meeting to uh, review not only the transient rental amendments, but also draft overlay legislation. So I want to let the community know that uh, we are working hard uh, to get something in place that makes sense um, for the community. Um, also an update uh, on what used to be Winterfest, uh, now uh, Winter Day on Main. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as we're seeing in a lot of communities, uh, those events have had to be scaled back um, to ensure that we maintain social distancing and, and other uh, guidelines that have been put in place uh, by the health department, who's been tremendous uh, during the planning processes. Uh, unfortunately, we have had to cancel uh, most recently the fireworks display uh, that we had hoped to have, but that is now canceled. Um, but Doug Steinwart and team uh, are working feverishly to make sure uh, that minimally we will have uh, an activity where uh, Santa will be uh, driving through the community uh, and interacting in a distanced way uh, with families and children. Uh, and that is planned for December 5th um, between the hours of roughly 11 and 1. Uh, and more details will come out uh, as soon as we have them. But uh, we still want to do something minimally for the community uh, to maintain somewhat a uh, sense of normalcy, albeit in a very safe manner. Uh, and then uh, update on the budget process. Um, Monday evening, uh, the Finance Committee held their fifth and final meeting uh, as relates to the budget process. Um, the Finance Committee did make a recommendation uh, for the draft uh, budget as currently written uh, to be presented to uh, Council. Uh, we are hoping for that to be at the first meeting in December. Um, I do want to make a mention um, that we do need to have a public hearing. Um, and we would ask council if they would consider having that public hearing uh, at that first meeting in December related to the 2021 budget. Um, do we do we uh, do we need 30 days for that? No. No, it's only seven days for this one. Seven days for this one. Okay. We're okay. Yeah. So we will need a motion to set the public hearing for December. Eight. All right. Uh, before we go on, will someone make that motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Claus. 
Uh, I'll make a motion that we set the public hearing date for review, uh, public review of the upcoming budget for 2021. And the date should be, Terry? December 8th. <laughs> I'm sorry, December 8th. December 8th. At 6.30 p.m. At 6.30 p.m. during our regular uh, council meeting. All right. Discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Claus? Yes. Tap? Yes. Artino? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Hagee? Yes. Crawford? Yes. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Lasko, I'm sorry. I wanted to get that out of the way before we got it. No, that's okay. Um, and I, I just wanted to end with, uh, of course, um, certainly wishing uh, staff, council, the community, uh, a happy and safe Thanksgiving uh, coming up here in two days. Uh, and with that said, I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions uh, from council. Uh, Mr. Lasko, hi. Um, yep. I have some couple couple questions. Following up on the striping, was there any further discussion on those uh, highlighting the the sewer grates and the bike lanes? Um, have some concern and just in riding it myself one day that if you for a car that wouldn't wouldn't be an issue, but for a bike those are. Uh, just, just a I guess through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Mr. Klaus, um, yes, that uh, request um, and consideration has been shared uh, with the contracting team uh, to highlight um, those grates um, near the borders uh, of the road. Uh, so we do anticipate that to happen as part of the striping project. Uh, we appreciate uh, certainly bringing that to our attention. We think that's a, a very smart and prudent one to make. And secondarily, in relation to that, I know there was a request um, for temporary safety measures as it relates to the bases of the uh, to be installed light poles. Uh, so we've also been in conversation with the contractors about temporary measures to cover those uh, pedestals up, uh, which currently have sort of bolts sticking up from the base. So contractors are aware and will uh, undertake both of those measures. Thank you. Uh, and one more quick question. I've had uh, follow up on the leaf pickup, which um, I think the the the, um, the crews in the street department has been great. They've been moving through probably quicker than we thought with the new equipment. That, um, I've had a couple, multiple people mention that the, the, the only thing that kind of is bothersome for the public is that um, they don't know when the leaf machine is going to be where um and so you rake all your leaves over a weekend and you don't realize that the truck just went by friday so now it's two more weeks and then the leaves blow all over the place um i believe um years ago before they suspended the the curbside program they used to do that and i'm wondering if we could put that challenge to the street department now that they've had a couple years under their belt and they know kind of now how long it takes to get through certain areas Maybe for next year, um, they could kind of try to schedule that as close as possible, at least by area, neighborhood, and, and people can have a little better feeling for where they're going to be um, and would keep leaves from getting blown all over the, you know, all over town as well. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I that's a good recommendation. Um, obviously, we're nearing the end. Uh, of this particular leaf season, sure, sure, uh, sure. but sort of just as a uh, review uh, of, of how things went this year, uh, I'd be happy to have those conversations with, with Steve and his team um, about what we can do to uh, make a schedule more predictable or a, uh, a path through town more predictable for the public, uh, points well taken, and I'll have those conversations uh, with the streets Thank team. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have a couple of issues, uh, Mr. Lasko. The uh, fence at the Shobo property, lot one there, uh, that needs some uh, looking at. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's pretty much uh, bent over and stuff in some areas. And right in that same area where that placard is at, uh, uh, 
there's a, I notice a couple of I beams that stick up out of the concrete. Um, I know apparently they've been there for a while, but maybe we should address those. They, they would look to me like they'd be a tripping hazard. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, uh, Doug Steinward had uh, reached out to me last week as related to the fencing uh, and looking at some alternative measures. Uh, so I know that's on uh, their radar, uh, but we'll also look into the other issue as well and come okay. up with a recommendation uh, to make those uh, necessary changes. Okay. Hopefully that, uh, that'll all be remedied uh, shortly, Mr. Uh, Schrader. <laughs> all right. Any other questions for, any other questions uh, for uh, the city manager? And uh, that's all I had too. So uh, other than I would like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, uh, stay safe. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, Mr. Lasker, are, are most of our people all back now and doing well or? Yeah, um, without uh, getting into details, um, I, I know the county, um, well, obviously the entire world is under duress at the moment, but we've had some spikes specifically in Erie County, particularly in some of our, uh, you know, governmental uh, entities, um, but we're, we're in good shape uh, and everyone's uh, uh, generally uh, back and healthy. So my hope is we've, we've made it through what will hopefully be uh, the biggest of all the waves. Um, obviously, I think we need to hunker down uh, this winter. Uh, there's a lot that's unexpected. Uh, but hopefully a vaccine's on the way. Um, and I, I feel really good with where uh, our staffing is uh, after making it through what was some bit of a wave that ran through the county a couple weeks ago. All right, good. All right, like we said, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Stay safe. And uh, next would be, for the good of the order, uh, Mr. Tapp. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe, stay healthy. I would uh, also like to send our condolences out to, uh, we lost a long time here in resident, Mr. Robert Bowers, who passed away last evening. Um, he was a uh, teacher for the Heron City Schools, a coach, a mentor, a father to many people, um, and a uh, avid fisherman, charter captain, and uh, he will be dearly missed. So I just want to send our condolences to the Bowers family. And uh, we we're thinking about them. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hagee. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> it's been a very difficult week for Huron. Uh, I, I would also like to express my condolences to the Bowers family and also to two other uh, longtime prominent members of the community, Len Round and Judy Kilberry. Um, those of you who knew Len, he was a little league coach. He was a booster, always involved in everything going on around town. And Mrs. Kilberry, just a just a super person. And if you know their kids, then you know what a great person she was. So I'd like to express my condolences to both the families, all three of the families. Uh, also like to say kudos to the uh, staff and the team Route 6. Um, I know it's been hard. I know it's been long and people are starting to get frustrated, but I thought it was a super job all the way around. Um, also, great job to the staff and team for dealing with uh, all the COVID stuff you guys are dealing with. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Crawford. I just have a couple things. Um, Terry and, and staff were hard at work today planning normalcy for us. We've got a safety committee meeting coming up on December 2nd at four. And there's also a utilities committee meeting same day at five. So getting back into the groove on those two things. Um, Matt, I know the chamber is still trying to put something together for what so was what, what, slash main on whatever. I think she's come up with something called Home for the Holidays for a third try. Um, maybe check in with Amy just to see what all she's got going on on that. I know she sent something out to chamber members. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Lake Erie Shores and Islands Travel Guide. Um, Amy's done a great job uh, working with uh, Jen Kilberry, actually to lay out a full page Huron spread. So we will actually have, Huron will have representation 
in that tourism guide next year. Um, I saw the proof today and it looks super. So a um, couple years now where Huron's been missing from that publication, I'm, I'm really pleased that we're gonna be back in that guide. Um, and also wish everyone happy Thanksgiving, but I would be remiss if I also didn't congratulate the Huron Tiger volleyball team. Uh, yeah. Way to go ladies on your state championship dug it out at the end they were hungry for it so congratulations to those particularly all those seniors in this topsy-turvy year I, I i think that had to do a world of good for those kids um it's giving and that's all i have all right thank you uh mr claus uh thank you mr mayor uh, just re kind of a somewhat of a repeat but i want to say happy thanksgiving and healthy safe to everybody um also pass along my condolences to the um kilberry round and bowers families um they uh definitely will be um sorely missed in the community and um thank everybody for their diligence through this this last um month or so and, and difficult time uh i want to you know thank corey and his staff for the great job with the uh, budget we just finished up our last uh financial finance uh, committee meetings yesterday and uh, we had a little struggle getting through the last couple of meetings with, with uh, COVID but um, those that was always great in his the you know preparation and everything of his team and um, I think um, he's done they've done a good job of Corey and Mike of getting Matt up to speed and it seems like Matt's very comfortable um, from the discussions we had light last night um, with where the budget is so we look forward to seeing that at our next um, next meeting to vote on. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, uh, Mr. Dyke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also want to give my condolences to the Kilberry, the Round, and also the Bowers family. Um, all of you are correct. Those are long time individuals that have done a lot for our community. They will be sorely missed. I'd also like to say congratulations to not only the volleyball team, but also all of the other fall athletic teams that participated and did tremendous jobs in the athletic fields that they were on during this COVID uh, time. So again, congratulations to all of them. Um, one other thing that I wanted to ask that we could potentially discuss and would be um, reducing the speed limit in R1 areas, for example, neighborhoods, Wexford, I've had individuals approach me where they feel that 25 miles an hour people uh, is way too fast. We've also had some individuals reach out to us out in Wheeler Ave. Um, I know in my neighborhood, I've had individuals to where 25, my kids are always running around. Um, as much as I yell at them, they still don't listen to me. So um, I wanted to see if that could be something discussed at the next safety committee meeting rather than 25, and this would be all in R1 residential areas, um, excluding the R1 areas where like a state route 13 or a route six would be, but this would be like, for example, the neighborhood. So I didn't know if we could uh, discuss that in the safety meeting and see if there could be something done. So I know I had a preliminary conversations with Mr. Lasco, but I wanted to formally bring it up at this meeting to have those talking points discussed. So I don't know what I need to do in order to pro make that happen. If you could guide me, anyone? I so. think we can just add it to the agenda, can't we, Terry? Yes, I will add it. I already made a note. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. All right, thanks, Joe. Thank All right, uh, something I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to bring up. Uh, uh, we've, had, uh, we've, had, we've had some issues with uh, some water shut off. Uh, I'd like to uh, refer back to Mr. Lasko on that. I guess, uh, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> members of council, um, we just wanted to uh, talk through and, and see if uh, council has a prerogative. Um, there uh, back in March uh, through May 31st of 2020, uh, council had passed a resolution um, waiving uh, utility late fees, mainly water late fees, uh, and also putting a moratorium um, on water shutoffs. Uh, that expired uh, at the end of May, um, and uh, the city <clears throat> reverted back to normal activities and normal processes 
during the last two quarters, uh, namely as it relates to the July bills and most re recently the October bills. Um, we do know that we're heading into, again, uh, a, a tough winter uh, where there may be um, employers scaling back um, during uh, a very difficult time of the year during the winter time. Um, so we wanted to bring it to council's attention um, if there would be a desire uh, to institute uh, some potential uh, moratorium once again uh, on shutoffs uh, and waiving of late fees. Um, I will let the council know uh, that at the moment we do have nine uh, shutoffs throughout the city. Uh, some of those are transient rental or seasonal that were meant to be shut off, uh, but we do believe there are four or five accounts um, that are shut off that are not. Um, and we can't predict that those will increase in the future, um, but they may uh, as we uh, head into, again, an uncertain winter. Uh, so I think we wanna just bring it up for discussion um, uh, and, and we're certainly happy to answer any questions, but uh, we wanted to bring it to council's attention that that moratorium has expired and do we wanna explore reinstituting um, some type of measures. Um, all right, I guess, uh, go ahead. Yeah, after discussion, I just kind of feel like it, we need to, I don't know if we can extend the moratorium. Um, I, I kind of have an issue with having the water turned off during the holidays right now. And I think it kind of flipped our mind that it ended on May 31st, but um, yeah. I'm not sure if we have to make a motion or if we can just extend the moratorium that we had previously. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schrader. Just a point of order to answer Mr. Tapp's question. I think it would be appropriate if council so chooses uh, to make a motion to amend that resolution from the floor and have it be extended until a date that council determines is appropriate. So a motion to amend the that particular resolution and I don't have the reference handy, but uh, a motion to, to extend that and to set a new deadline would be appropriate. If council so chooses, I say. Okay. Um, Mr. Lasko, we what uh, we talked about maybe sometime in the um, what, the second quarter of next year, or the first quarter of next year or something. Yes, what I would add and Corey jump in if uh, I um, so the next uh, billing cycle um, uh, is actually up in a day or two. Those bills will be processed in December and those bills are due in early January. Um, so the next round of potential shutoffs for payment would be in January uh, as currently constituted. Uh, obviously then the next billing cycle after that would be due in April. Um, so we'd look uh, if, if it's if council so chooses, um, if we want to get through that January uh, time period, uh, we probably look to do something near the end of January. If we want to extend that through a second cycle, uh, we want to look to probably extend that through the end of April. Um, the other thing I would want to bring to council's attention that we'd need to address um, is whether we have any action on the existing four or five accounts that are currently shut off. Um, as to whether we'd want to make a motion to turn those back on uh, as part of this action. And then secondarily, if we're waiving late fees, what, what we're not doing uh, is waiving the bill at, in its entirety. Um, so we would want to make sure we have a plan in place so that people can reasonably pay those arrears um, over another bill or two or three or four once we reinstitute um, uh, or, or re remove the moratorium. So those would be two things that we would need to address as well. <clears throat> Corey, I don't know if you'd like to add any more to that uh, dialogue. Uh, yeah, Matt, the only thing I, I do want to suggest is uh, instead of having the January as a deadline for the next billing cycle, I would suggest moving it out through March just because the shutoffs will occur in February. The next billing cycle will start, it will be sent out at the end of March. So uh, for the next billing cycle coming up, if we uh, 
if we do extend it, I would suggest going to the end of March on the shutoffs and the and the late fees just to be safe. Uh, and the only thing I wanted to add too is if we do amend, and maybe this is a question for the law director, but if we do amend the uh, former ordinance, would the city have to go back through the last two billing cycles and credit or refund any fees, late fees or anything waived in those previous cycles? That would just be a question I would have maybe for the legal team. Mr. Mayor, may I reply? Sure. Uh, Mr. Sway's good. I think that crediting would be appropriate, especially if the if the body elects to amend that particular resolution. Um, it would be appropriate to credit those that have been charged. And incidentally, as an uh, additional point, we don't have that resolution handy. What we could do for the time being is the city can elect to just stand by until our next meeting. And at that time, we can have um, that uh, resolution before us and in a proper amendment to extend the deadline pursuant to what Mr. Sway's good and Mr. Lasko are speaking of, and we can kind of round it all out at once if that's the preference. That makes sense to me. All right. Uh, and what about the uh, people that have their water shut off in the meantime? Mr. Schrader, what can we do? To, can we can we go ahead and get those turned back on? Yes, yes, especially if we're going to extend. Yes, and credit and credit the amounts for those that have been charged. Okay. I guess, Mr. Lasko, we can uh, you can go ahead and take care of that and have those turned back on. I don't know if we need a motion to do that or how we're going to do that. And just uh, to make sure we're all on the same page, what I'm hearing. I'm is that um, we would look potentially for a motion tonight to, to turn on the accounts that have been shut off for non-payment, not the accounts that have obviously been asked to be voluntarily uh, turned off for seasonality reasons. And then we would look to come to council at the December 8th meeting uh, for a formal resolution um, as it relates to the next one or two Billing cycles, if, if I heard everything correctly. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that that sounds like that's what we want. We want a motion to uh, um, turn on the accounts, um, and we'll wait till next week. And these are the accounts that are are, are not not the accounts that were uh, due to vacations or whatever. Uh, okay. How would you like that worded, uh, Mr. Schrader? To be a motion to restore water service to those customers that have been turned off since the expiration of the moratorium for non-payment. All right, Mr. Tapp, do you want to make that motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we, uh, whatever Mr. Schrader said. <laughs> so, so moved. <laughs> Moved. All right. So yeah, to get, yeah, get the waters that were turned off, uh, accounts turned off, turned back on for those that uh, had them turned off. Okay. The All right. So, all right. So the motion is to restore water service to customers um, that have been turned off uh, just recently. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Please call the roll. Yeah. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Hagee. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claude. Yes. Okay. Sorry, uh, I forgot to bring that up earlier. Um, next thing is the uh, administration has asked for an executive session. I don't believe we will have uh, any type of uh, action taken afterwards, so I'll need a motion to go in executive session for purpose of consultation with legal counsel regarding a pending or imminent court action. Mr. So Mayor. Yes. I'd like to make a motion 
that uh, we go into executive session for the purpose of consultation with legal counsel regarding pending or imminent court action. Okay. Discussion. Can we invite somebody? Do you we need anybody invite. in the meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like we to need. invite Mr. Schrader. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ebert. Mr. Ebert. Mr. Ed, Lasko. Mr. Mr. Lasko. Lasko. No, I, I don't think we're inviting Mr. Spafford. Okay. Are we? Mr. No. Lasko. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, discussion on that motion. Please call the roll. Tap. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Hagee. Yes. Crawford. Yes. Claus. <clears throat> Yes. Okay, we're back in uh, regular session at 7.52. Any other discussion? With that, uh, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Mr. Mayor. Chris Crawford. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Crawford. Yes. Claus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Artino. Yes. Dyke. Yes. Hardy. Yes. Haggy. Yes. Okay. That's it. Motion uh, to adjourn has been approved. Uh, thanks, everyone. Good night and uh, stay safe. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Good night. Bye.